Welcome to the IBM Podcast Network. Hey, welcome to Geek Fruit Redcon, where we travel back in time to a previous episode from our inglorious history on the Geek Fruit Podcast. Happy listening, you nerds. Everybody, welcome to Geek Food. You're listening to me, Tejas, and Jishnu. Hi, Jishnu. Oh, hoi, hoi. It's another week, another movie, which is uh, uh, it's a the summer movie, the big summer movie. Not for us in India because it's raining, but in the states and everywhere else, pretty it's much. It's still hot, man. Is it? It's it's I, hot. Nights have become quite. It is not pleasant. Oh, okay. I, yeah, I don't count nights. Yeah, nights are good. I mean, when the big thing yeah. in the sky is. In the sky, and like that's when it's hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's a summer movie, Suicide Squad. We're going to be talking about this whole episode. Pretty much is dedicated to Suicide Squad. Why? I don't know. But we will talk about uh, a few things. Some fun things happened over the course of the last week, uh, which is not including not including the movie, f- funnily enough. Uh, but it is actually about a very very fun night that Geek Fruit and Vox Pop and Sony Music India got to host and be part of which was called the Suicide Squad Night uh it was a Suicide Squad Night at, at like a dedicated theme kind of party listening session slash other things um which we did i think at uh i can't remember what date it was but it was last week and it was at Hard Rock Cafe Worley just when you want to tell us what happened what happened we i was also there but you can tell everybody what happened it was <laughs> it was most amusing yes, especially uh seeing some of the excitement from fans it was uh a, it was a good crowd i mean Hard Rock Cafe is obviously a kind of an odd venue to get but we got it kind of at the last minute so we took what we got and no, that's fine uh but yeah, my we still the visit. people right that's yes. yeah i don't know how you've not been to yeah. hard rock worldly before i've never been anyway, to hard rock worldly yeah um so uh it was great just seeing the energy from uh, the people that were there who came for the quiz and what yeah, not yeah there were there people were, there were people that came like an hour before the event even began and we didn't plan to start the quiz until 2 hours after the event mm-hmm. began because technically as you said it was a listening session that Sony had put together for the soundtrack, soundtrack for the yeah, movie that's right um and so we yeah it was people waiting for like 3 hours essentially yeah. to like take part in this quiz and that was really cool and especially um, since it was only the event was only announced like a few days before right that. exactly yeah, like so i said it was, it was a little last l- last minute so we want to show how many people we'd get but the people that we did get were really into it and that was really great to see yeah. and a really fun um i guess social experiment for lack of a better word that i noticed happening was yeah. that um So like I said it was a quiz and it was a kind of quiz where everybody that wants to take part can take part yeah. and then you qualify to be part of the main quiz which is where the questions get really tough and that's where that was had, on the stage in front of yeah, yeah yeah and we had like over 100 questions for people um yeah, so, so that, that was that, so that part of the that, that part of the night was exclusively organized by Geek Fruit which was really fun for mm-hmm. us to do and execute and Dinkar who often is on this show uh was the host he's not here today but uh yeah he did a great job as being the host the riddler a, he did a fantastic yeah. job and um yeah what was really really interesting to see was that uh when we put questions out to the entire room and so you had to qualify that's when you know we would throw questions out to an entire room of people half of which cared half of which weren't there before the quiz because they right. just came to have dinner <laughs> yeah. at hard rock cafe yeah. so like a kotak mahindra bank it, like the kotak mahindra bank private party yeah. um <laughs> so it was met with you know mixed uh mixed feelings when we stole began, the mic and began the evening yeah. But I was on the floor fielding audience questions in the middle of the quiz while Dinkar and uh, Tejas were up on the stage handling the quiz itself. I was running around taking any audience questions that came about. And so I got to hear what the audience were talking about while the quiz was running and mm. they were so into it. Yeah. Because I think the minute that you take the power of the quiz away from them that like aha now you have been deemed unworthy of answering these questions that we are presenting yeah. that's when people get jealous and then they're like are you match fixing hai boss hey kya ho raha hai like hey i know these answers what are these some easy questions is i i can say this also yeah. so it was they all collectively sounded like this pretty much <laughs> yeah, pretty yeah. much yeah. um but yeah a uh, special shout to one uh rogue squadron Rogue right? Squadron, yeah, and, they were great. And the they other was Daddy's. So, no, I, I'm going to name all uh, four teams that made it to the finals. Please do it. It was um, 
So it was Dragons from the East, there was Rogue Squadron, there was the OD Squad, and there was Daddy's Little... What? Monster. Monsters, yes. A la monster. a little t-shirt. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Very little t-shirt. Uh, yeah, so uh, so those uh, four teams did really, really well, made it to the finals. And I, you know, we were grading all the other yeah. elimination papers. And the, some of them were so funny because they were just like, from questions four to eight, it was, somebody just put a curly bracket and said, Yaar, please, mujhe marks de do, mujhe <laughs> merchandise chahiye. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. I remember to at least uh, yeah. close to that. And yeah, it was great. It was I was really... I was very impressed with the, with the two teams that won. We had a tie for the winner. And funnily enough, in Dragons in the East, there was Chang from Indian Idol, the yeah. guy who won Indian Idol. Yeah. Who was in? And so funny because we had a question which said the question was which show did Will Smith appear on when he came to India? And he was like, boom, Indian Idol. I was like, that's cheating, dude. <laughs> you were there for that. So that's not fair at all. Yeah. Uh, but it was really cool. I didn't know he was such yeah. a nerd. Mihir Joshi, mm-hmm. uh, who we know and love so well uh, because he's part of the music fraternity as well. Uh, he's a, a, obviously, I mean, he's a big you know, fan of Marvel, DC and other things. And he showed up in the beginning and we just, uh, we dry run our eliminations question by him but he did really well. If he stayed, he probably would have won. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he was good. So everybody was was really really nice, um, and it was good to connect with a lot of good fans. I mean, we keep saying that here at Geek Food, we're trying to unite estranged fan, uh, geeks at least. And yeah, it was good to see lots of people. And when they spoke, we spoke to them about Geek Food. They were just really really like interesting. Mm-hmm. It was good. It was yeah, good fun. Yeah, I enjoyed all of Hope it. Hope to do it again. So yeah, guys, please uh, mail in all your questions. Uh, I'm going to tell you this before two things before we start the segment on Suicide Squad. One is spoilers alert. Obviously, we're going to be spoiling the movie for uh, everyone who's listening. Uh, if you have seen it, uh, then you know there's not much but uh, preferably try and watch the movie and and then listen to the episode uh, it, once we're done you can mail us you can uh, write in and, and the best answers will get some uh, cool merch uh, courtesy of Harry Potter and uh and the and the Deathly Hallows, or at least any we got some Harry Potter merch to give away this week. So this is true. Um, so yeah, if you if you guys want to in in particular, in that, I yes. must mention if we have any female listeners that are like below the age of eleven <laughs> ish, uh, they just gave me a pair of socks, and he knows that like I have a lot of socks, and I have really yeah. fun, colorful socks, so I like collecting socks. So I was yes. like, hey, cool, Harry Potter socks. All right, that's neat. Turns out I'm wearing they, some right uh, now. So yeah, they the, the ones well the ones that he gave me are Gryffindor. So I hope you like Gryffindor because. I don't. So they're Gryffindor socks, but they are definitely for little girls. Not little and girls. I think that's just for no. They small are. They feeted. are. I, I'm a size twelve. My feet are size twelve. These okay. would have been like maybe size four okay. on a on a guy. So these are tiny. All right. And you then, haven't opened and then, them and tried them on. I have condition. not opened them and tried them on. I have just seen them in comparison to my foot, Excellent. and it was quite small. So if we have any childlike listeners. Yeah, this one's for everyone, you. everyone is childlike listening to the show. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so we have some cool Harry Potter merch. We've got some. Uh, we got like a Deathly Hallows kind of thing, and we've got a notebook and, and a bunch of stuff. So yeah, uh, guys, please mail into us. It's geekfood at gmail. Uh, contact geekfood. Uh, I, I would say contact geekfood at gmail dot com. Uh, you can also contact us uh, directly through our website at the contact button. Uh, and yeah, so please mail us in. We'll give you some merch and uh, maybe some Vox Pop. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Vouchers. Poppery. Yeah, so there you go. Vox Poppery. See what I did? Very nicely. Yeah. I, I like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm <laughs> going to take a short break. going to come back and do Suicide Squad. I'm very proud of myself. Hello, listeners. My name is Munaf Kapadia. And I am Nabil Merchant. We are the co-hosts of the show, My Neighbor Zuckerberg. On this show, we invite ordinary people who have extraordinary stories to share. Tales of creativity, persistence, and struggle. We call them entrepreneurs. Tune in every Monday to listen to their journeys. We are available on iTunes, Audio Boom, and the IVM podcast app. Cool, we're back talking about Suicide Squad. Ahoy. So, just, okay, so before we go, I'm gonna, uh, let me preface the film for everybody. Uh, Suicide Squad is a movie directed by David Ayer, and uh, this is the third installment in the DCEU, uh, which is the extended, expanded, extended universe, I want to say. I don't even care anymore. Okay, cool. Yeah, so so that should uh, that should give you a feel of what it <laughs> that, feels like. Uh, that is my opinion. <laughs> okay, cool. So yeah, Suicide Squad direct, directed by David Ayer, uh, director of uh, movies like Training Day and End of Watch, things like that. So good director, Fury. He's done some good stuff. He also wrote this film, um, and this was the first movie, which is it's kind of a weird one because it's not uh, it's not a Batman movie, it's not a Joker movie, it's not it's not uh, it's not a Superman. It's, it's it's like basically what Jishnu uh, you you told me this like a couple of. Uh, a weeks ago he's like this is their response to Guardians of the Galaxy yeah. and it makes very much like mm-hmm. you know a lot of sense 
uh, in that sense that you know they were trying to do something off the major kind of yeah. you know vibe and do yeah. something different. So this is a movie based on the popular comic Suicide Squad, uh, which is about taking super villain uh, super villains in a government operation that you know basically it's a suicide mission to go and do something very very dangerous, and uh, if they survive it. They get some time off their parole and maybe some, you know, perks in their prison sentence. Uh, otherwise, uh, it's most probably uh, their last mission. And across many issues, lots of Suicide um, Squad characters have been killed off. Uh, it happens in this movie as well. We'll get to that. And uh, yeah, man, so this was that interpretation. And in this movie, particularly, we've got some big stars, big names. You got Will Smith as Deadshot. We've got Margot Robbie as fan favorite Harley Quinn. We've got uh, Viola Davis as Amanda Waller, who's the main head of Argus, who's basically organizes Suicide Squad, and then a bunch of cameos. So yeah, having said that, let's dive in straight into the movie and talk about what worked, what didn't work. I wanna, I wanna be, yes, uh, you nice. know, let's, good. Let's I wanna be, nice. be good about it. Let's try to be. We're trying positive. very hard to like DC let's for many years. Let's put now. a big smile on our face and yeah. say mean things because that's all we can do. But. Yeah. Uh, smile while you do it. Okay, we will we'll smile. We'll smile while we do it. Uh, so, so Jishnu, uh, you wanna you wanna start off okay. and tell me what you thought, like briefly. Uh, all right. <laughs> Where do I begin? Okay. So here's the good thing about this movie and Guardians. Mm. Um, obviously, when Wait, what they they share personalities, like about the fact that they're similar, and what I think is good about this particular breed of superhero movies. You're saying idea wise, the idea of it. Of course, the idea yes, is yeah. great. <laughs> so when when you when you make a movie with uh, with characters and a location and a plot and superpowers that people already know about, okay, like your Superman, your Batman, and mm. you know various few people from the Marvel universe that people already know about, yeah, you're at a big disadvantage, right? Because the audience comes in with preconceived notions about yeah, what should agree. and shouldn't be right agree. and that's a huge task for a writer to work around right? especially with the problem that uh, Batman versus Superman faced exactly yeah right twofold yeah so with this one and Guardians what they have on their side uh, for the writer is that hey clearly this is this is out to people that like like superhero movies and will buy into like random th- stuff exploding and like laser beams yeah and there are no preconceived notions because you've never heard of these people yeah but what Guardians did really well, which this one advertised itself to be able to do, yeah. but did not deliver on, I think like we were sold a false product. Mm. Was, yes, we were. Was that yeah. the marketing for this movie, much like with Guardians, was um, here is something completely out of the blue, left of center. I guarantee you've never heard of these people. They're all no names. Mm-hmm. And so we're going to have some fun with this because we don't have to buy we we don't have to buy into what we know you already think about them yeah, right yeah. so guardians had its marketing done with like that lineup shot and like and then uh, john c riley introduces all five of them to the camera pretty much yeah. and in this one the movie begins with these montage shots oh god freaking 20 25 minutes it's, it's, of just yeah. exposition montage and it was so sickening but it was really here bad, is, yeah. here's where i think they messed up hmm. i think that the marketing for this movie was so intense, mm. as we know, they put out like twenty variants had, of yeah, trailers, they had four right? Four major trailers, four yeah. major trailers, and a bunch of like little of character which I think things. we both saw two. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so I think they, I feel like they might have gotten a little caught off guard by how successful the marketing for this movie was, mm. because those first twenty-five minutes, I think, had a completely different feel than. The last sixty percent of, of the course. movie, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Because when it begins, that's when you get the soundtrack in your face. You get these, you know, very distinct graphic visuals that pop out of nowhere, and this very stylized comic booky kind of thing. Yeah. And at first, I was like, okay, yeah, this is what you told me I was going to get. This is only exposition, so I'm not emotionally, <laughs> in, I'm not emotionally attached to it. But all right, cool. Yeah. Let this part finish, and I'm waiting for you to give me a reason to yeah. like care about these guys. Yeah. And then it just drops like a rock, and it comes to like a serious somber, like, hey. This is a mission time. This is a mission time. And like, we have feelings. And no, we don't want to go because we have families that we care about. And yeah, so that. Yeah. Like, tell me, at any point in this movie, did you ever feel sympathy for anybody? Did you ever like go, hmm, uh, yeah, I feel a bit sad because you're crying. Uh, yeah, you know, you know, they made it very hard for us to feel that way. I did feel it like in two, for who? For two, for, in two parts. Again, they didn't earn it. It's only because obviously I'm well versed with the characters, which is why I know. So the one, one moment... <laughs> Actually, this is so so difficult to do. I know. Uh, this is very difficult to do. Okay, we'll come back to this. But okay, um, but right. uh, yeah, I think uh, you're right, man. The first twenty minutes were just a hot mess, man. Yeah, what yeah, a mess! Yeah. I mean, like 
I don't need all that graphic stuff, man. I yeah. don't need all that yeah. all that text. I thought that would purely be like you know how they presented the trailers. That was basically a trailer, wasn't it? So they got the guy who cut the trailer. Yeah. To cut the movie. Exactly. Yeah. They re they recut it, which is which, to terrible. me just just sounds like complete blasphemy. It's like it's like telling it's like you tell the artist, i.e., the director, hey, write a movie, and he does, and then you say, okay, cool, thanks for this. Yeah. We're now gonna like get some r- dudes that basically know know how to make money and yeah. don't give two craps about the integrity of your film and the yeah. integrity of your narrative, yeah. and just make it flashy and sell. And that's what they did. In that way, I still prefer Batman vs Superman. The at least the the way stuff is presented, it's like it has one tone. It's yeah, not oh, maybe uh, yes, yeah, and uh, it absolutely. goes with it. Absolutely, yeah, it yeah, runs yeah. with it. Right? This was just confused. This was really slipshod it work, man. It was so confused. Yeah. it didn't know what uh, it wanted to do. Uh, uh, you know, and the other thing is that so it's very hard to approach these films now. At least for us, extremely hard. But for generally also now, I think because you know the whole world has changed now, everything's franchise and mm-hmm. all connections and stuff. Mm-hmm. You can't approach a movie just independently. You have to. I mean, we know that. Batman vs Superman was a critical failure mm-hmm. and a box office failure for, for for many reasons and because of that there was a lot of uh you know action taken at the DC headquarters yeah. to kind of revise everybody's plans you know so many people fired so many people hired Jeff Johns is now looking over the entire thing Ben Affleck has got a much larger role Zack Snyder is literally you know under the you know under a microscope yeah. uh, and similarly for this film it feels like there was a film before this that David Ayer was making this guy is a good director he's a good writer director I mean Training Day is is a fantastic a film. film and he's made some other really good films I haven't seen End of Watch or Fury but uh, from everything that people tell me those are good well realized films which have plot structure character everything Th- this movie felt like it had a lot of stuff going on I mean I'm sure you felt that you know the Joker has been cut out completely from this film yeah. when there was clearly a good um, maybe a good 10-15 minutes of his introduction with Harley that has just been removed from this film and just been put very randomly <laughs> in those first 20 minutes and uh, that anyway that bothered me so I think structure wise I th- so it was changed completely because of the backlash of BVS yeah. and because of that they said no we need to go lighter we need yeah. to go fun we need to go fun we yeah. need to you know and, and that's why we have those first 20 minutes which is just plays out like a unending music video by the way that yeah. was so annoying it was so annoying it was so annoying that one, mo- one moment there's a song playing it directly cross fades to another song directly cross fades into another song and so on and so yeah. forth for the first 20 minutes the CC are Eminem yeah. it's just like a bunch of songs just like it's a mu- music video and it yeah. just felt so cringe yeah. like I was yeah. just like please stop the music speaking yeah <laughs> uh, speaking of which uh, have you seen the Skrillex and Rick Ross music video music okay no so I haven't so apparently so, the Joker has more screen time in that than yeah, he has in this movie yeah he does so I saw that video and it's good is it good? <laughs> oh, is that also bad? Oh, Jesus God. I mean well I mean it's a typical you know uh, it's, it's a typical music video it's basically I mean, I, I don't think anybody should have watched that video with any uh, hope of seeing something that's like actually, you know, worth your time, as opposed to like just trying to sell a sell. Is sell it like song. Uh, is it like Marilyn Manson in Terminator Two, like that music video? What was it called? What? I can't remember. I've not seen uh, that. Marilyn Manson made a music video when I think T Two launched, and sure. and uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger is there in it, and he walks really? into the club where he's playing, just walks in like. Huh. You know the T eight hundred and maybe just like, I need to see this. Yeah, and just <laughs> well, I mean, this was basically that. Actually, now that you mention it, this was yeah. literally that because it was, it, was, yeah. it was Rick Ross and Skrillex in the in the bar where Harley Quinn and Joker have that thing with Common, it's, right? Uh, oh, with that, that scene, oh, that the strip was club the scene, worst that's such a scene. cringe. That was anyway, so, so very bad. Scene. They, it, the video is just Rick Ross and Skrillex being, you know. Like singing the song and yeah. like a bunch of girls and yeah. doing okay. music video things. Okay. And the Joker walks in and then Joker makes like weird Joker faces and like smiles at the camera like he does. And they get in some Lamborghini, they drive around and they keep singing the song and that's it. Now, I'm not saying I have a problem with that because like that is it's a music, music video. video. That's it's what fine. music videos are and it sucks because there's nothing to it, but whatever. But what scares me is that since this movie made more money than Guardians, even though it doesn't yeah. hold up the Guardians in the slightest. In the slightest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Even this movie was going to be a critical success because the marketing was so good in that the marketing was okay. getting butts and seats. Yeah. It had YouTube hits. It had repeat viewing. It had the music. The music was obviously a big push. Yeah. So my worry is, I don't know how realistic this concern is, but yeah. I hope that this does not set a new precedent for like movies mixing in with music videos because the thing is it i it just felt wrong to me seeing this this beautiful city the midway city mm-hmm. art direction that nice. they had was nice it was like cool it was like this is part of this universe that i'm seeing between metropolis gotham and midway 
and the Joker lives in this. So that's cool. All right, I'm getting to know this world. And then I'm seeing Skrillex and Rick Ross just like wander into this. I'm like, guys, you need to separate mm. like reality from, you know what I mean? Like, I like, agree. Res- like respect this yeah. for being its own well, thing. Like this is... I guess. I mean, know, people, it's, not, it's not unheard of. It's, I mean, it's been done before. I know, but I, With, uh, I worry that like this Back is... Back to the Future a, when this guy did... Uh, what's his name? Uh, I can't remember The Power of Love He's there in that video also uh, oh, I mean, right. uh, Doc Brown and, yeah, and yeah. You know This one is there in it. Uh, B- uh, Prince is in B- And Bad Dance Has a whole video with that Right so I think this is, this is Something it's, it's in, happened, in common It's in happened that. before But the thing is like This video is already On like some 11 million views And whatnot, And it's yeah. Skrillex It's gonna get even more It's gonna get bigger Like I just really do you hope feel That this though, doesn't do, like, do you feel though I, th- I think this movie feels like You know I feel Now that Batman vs Superman Was this critical failure and that kind of set the tone for now whatever we're seeing mm-hmm. Man of Steel kind of did but it was not connected in the beginning now it has been yeah. retrofitted into it yeah. but ba- Batman vs Superman is for me it is the first film of this whole thing Suicide Squad was w- already well into production for them to have changed too much and yeah. because they changed a lot of it it's now this weird ugly kind of you know you know Frankenstein kind of piece you know this mm-hmm. uh, this so i think we're going to have to we have to flush out all the all the bad ones and you know i think wonder woman is also done so i hope wonder woman is good because they were still had some time to to do some corrective the trailer measures looked great like all the trailers looked the, the, i no, mean i take that back no, all the trailers w- did not look good no wonder woman particularly <laughs> looks good i'm very it excited look it it looks good justice league looks like the first one which is from scratch kind of Changed as a vehicle for, for for this franchise. Anyway, I'll be honest. I can't even think that far ahead. I can't. Yeah, it's like, coming out next I, year, though. Yeah, I so can't. I can't think that far ahead. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but, we okay, have okay. one more Marvel movie coming okay. out this year. So yeah. let let's just put this on pause for a second. Yeah. Let's go back let's to saying nice things. No, let's talk about the movie. So uh, the premise of this film uh, is quite strange. So this is what I understood and what really annoyed me right from the beginning. The Amanda Waller comes in and says, "Listen." You know, Superman is dead, and now we know that this is part of a world that is after uh, BVS. I don't know where in the timeline this was fitting, but they said Superman is dead. What if the next Superman is a terrorist? Let's try and form a bunch of supervillains in a team that you know, basically is a it's a secret op- uh, like an operation. So that mm-hmm. is the first thing that I was like, okay, cool. So they're trying to form this team. Who are the members of this team? So and so. Yes, we get all the exposition. One of the members is Enchantress. And this is what happens then in the next 10 minutes between that and the main part of the film. Yeah. It's like, hey, let's form a Suicide Squad. Hey, one of the members of the Suicide Squad is the villain of the Suicide Squad. Yeah. We need the Suicide Squad. That's the movie. <laughs> That's pretty much yeah. the premise of the film. Yeah. And uh, it goes on to show that the, fu- the, the, the Suicide Squad and the whole movie have two tasks. One is to recover somebody from a building. That's Amanda Waller. Yeah. That's the first part of the film. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, what? What was the point? Why did, we, they, why did they do this? Why, yeah. why did they do this? It was this? basically training day. So it, it was their training day. It was like, hey, Amanda Waller, I'm Amanda Waller. Yeah. Hey, form the Suicide Squad. Mm-hmm. Hey, now, save me. Right. That's the first part of the film. The second part of the film is Enchantress, one of the members of Suicide Squad, mm-hmm. is now the antagonist of the Suicide Squad. Yeah. Which I just found absolutely yeah. bizarre. Because this brings up a great point of then like, so if they didn't know that Enchantress was going to like change over and do all this, uh, yeah. why did they have, like, what was their mission going to be? What was it? Yeah, exactly. You know? And you know, because it happens in the span of like five minutes exactly. in the movie. Like it's literally five seconds. It's like, like she disappears, goes to like some nether <laughs> realm, comes back and like, hey, I'm evil now. Like, oh, damn it. Okay, I guess we got to like okay, fight now, her. So you are the, you are this. Right. Yeah. So, thing is, th- <laughs> the, the so to, to that end, I completely understand you know her, especially because of the with that post credit scene with her and Bruce Wayne, uh, where he says, "I'm forming the Justice League." She's like, "Oh, you want you want a you want a team? I want leverage, or you want friends? I want leverage." Yeah. So Suicide Squad is meant to be for leverage. Fine, I get the idea behind that. Oh, no, 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 it makes questioning sense. the the purpose of right, the Suicide right, right, Squad. right. So I would it it makes more sense to me for her to then say, "Okay, guys, here's the thing. I'm gonna put this." thing in your neck you might die if you piss me off but just, so you're on call right yeah. you're on call you're until on something call. happens exactly but the thing is nothing happened nothing happened nothing they weren't needed and they were called in and it was only in the middle of doing the thing that That's, was like to save Amanda basically I guess like here's practice I guess if you can save me you pass the test it, it, yeah. it's only when that happens does the tr- chain of events get taken and place, I feel like kind of, which is so stupid. many different ideas for a villain could have been there infiltrate LexCorp infiltrate Wayne yeah. Enterprise infiltrate some Something yeah. would recover something, recover maybe a, a you know a person that you require that the government requires. Okay, something. Okay, but um, yeah. So 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 that that is that. One last question before we take a break. 
Why is Bruce Wayne funding the Van Chris Foundation, which is the one which puts the the bomb in people's necks? It was. It says Division of Wayne Enterprises, yeah. and that's the one that's going to kill villains off. That's not, why would yeah. I mean? It just felt like an unnecessary extension. It was just ah, absolutely bizarre. Any other villain would have worked for this. Yeah. But one of the members goes rogue and becomes the villain. Already, mm-hmm. this is not Goldeneye. <laughs> Gosh. Okay, we'll come back. I have, <laughs> yeah. I, have a, I have a point that I think will okay redeem it. No, I hope I hope so. Not really, but it's fun. <laughs> okay, cool. Better not be about like people surviving helicopter crashes. Nope. Jesus. Okay, cool. Did you know that some termites in Africa have a pleasantly minty flavor? Did you know that India's largest music festival was in a way conceptualized in Estonia? Did you know that the awesomest chips in the world are found only inside US prisons? Hello, I'm Chuck. I'm Shrikit. And I'm Naren. And together we are Simplified, a podcast that helps you appear smarter to an audience that knows no different. Or give you some stuff to talk about at parties. We are ultra crepidarians. And if you don't know what that means, then tune in to Simplified with a B on iTunes, Audio Boom, or your favorite podcasting app. Episodes out every fortnight. Hi, we're back talking about the Suicide Squad. You're listening to Geek Fruit with me, Tejas and Jishno. So, yeah. the Suicide Squad triple X parody has a better plot line than this movie. Let me You've tell you. You've already seen it, Jishno. No, the Jesus. trailer alone will tell you everything. Okay. Like, we mentioned this like a while ago, that yeah. the, the, the the porn parody came out before the movie came yes. out. And, and, and for anybody who's listening, why we, we often drop the porn parody, because we did an entire episode. You should it. definitely check, you that should check that out. You yes. should totally check that out. It's yeah. hilarious. Science um, fiction and fantasy porn parody. Okay, go ahead. So, the, the porn parody... Uh, thing of it like I said since it was made beforehand they didn't know what the plot was right and they do a better job and they do a better job so their plot is that the Suicide Squad is formed as we know it Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) and they are made to find a patient not patient sorry inmate zero or something zero patient zero inmate zero whatever basically Amanda Waller says you need to go to uh, Arkham Asylum break in and steal patient zero for me okay Who's patient zero? The Joker. Exactly. Of course. So, Such a good idea. And it's brilliant. And Why? basically, and so the and so their whole oh, their whole premise, obviously yeah. being a porn parody, something somebody needs to fall in love with somebody, right? So obviously Harley Quinn, while trying to save the Joker, hey, that's brilliant. I fell in love with you again, and then they go and create create havoc, and then Batman, Joker, and Harley Quinn have a threesome at the end. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, still hey, a better movie. That would be a great post credit scene. Still a better love story than. Twilight. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that makes sense to me. That's actually a great. I'm saying okay. Avoid all the other porn <laughs> yeah. parts of it. That's a, that's seriously good. So there was a there was an animated film which was based on the Arkham series games that came out. It was called Batman Assault on Arkham. And now that movie title is slightly misleading because it's not really about Batman. It was about the Suicide Squad and how they have to break into Arkham. Mm-hmm. And this is this is a perfectly good plot for this movie, which was just not utilized. Yeah. The Joker. Even though he's kind of weird, that first scene we were talking about when, you know, Common is there as mm-hmm. Monster T and stuff like that. First of all, I found that absolutely strange. It was not scary. It was not, yeah. it was not anything. It was just weird and uh, and just, it just, ma- it didn't leave me uncomfortable as much as like, I was like, what is this scene doing here? Who was that, behaving like what? That was my emotion for like the entire movie. Uh, no, I mean, just, I'm, okay. I don't know what I'm looking okay, at. Okay, cool. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, but you know, there's still moments that, okay, we'll get, we'll get to those. I mean, we, we're trying to get to those. Um, but, you know, that, that, stra- that, sc- that scene was really strange. Uh, the Harley Quinn Joker love story, there's nothing, there's nothing about how that happened. Like how, she just fell in love with him. Yeah. Okay, cool. Fine, they fell in love. And some of those scenes are really nice. Like the one which you've seen the trailers of him jumping into the vat is mm-hmm. really nicely done mm-hmm. and they ha- add to the story. But then some of it stylistically is so weird. Like there's this one scene where the Joker is just like pining for Harley and then he falls back on his back and he's surrounded by all these knives. Yeah. It looks cool for a shot, but yeah, I was like, it, why is that there in the... I mean, exactly, like, it's, absolutely, it's absolutely, absolutely pointless. Absolutely. So artistically, there's a lot of like, again, gaps in the whole thing. All right. So coming back to the to the Suicide Squad team. All right. So now we get Will Smith, who is Deadshot, who's given a backstory with a daughter and everything. Mm-hmm. Will Smith is great in this film. Yeah, he's good because he's Will Smith. He's got plenty of experience yep. of playing this kind of character, yep. who's got great one-liners. Yep. And I believe I strongly attribute a lot of the sales of this opening weekend to Will Smith of because course. he's a huge movie star. Of course, there was and, never any doubt in anybody's mind yeah. that this movie would sell. And he's yeah. good. He's actually good in it. He yeah. doesn't feel like out of place. Like he's been out of place in many films. Like I thought After Earth was weird and blah blah blah. But you know, he is good. He's in one this. of the safest bets. 
bets. He is a safe bet. That's he exactly is, what he is. He is a movie star. Yeah, he's a, like, he's a he will, veritable He will be charismatic and he will play the part appropriately. If the part is written poorly, he will make it better. Yeah, it's so true. But it's still I a know, really bad plot, so you can't help I was just it. like, he didn't do Independence Day to do this movie yeah. and I was just like still the right choice yeah. but also meh <laughs> <laughs> you know and I was just thinking about that okay cool so Will Smith is great uh, Harley Quinn I mean Margot Robbie was a dead ringer for this role I mean she, she looks really the good. part She's, yeah. she is good yeah. again what is she doing in the Suicide Squad like why are they going up against a villain who has supernatural powers and these people are just regular Regular yeah. people. And this is my problem with the Suicide Squad team. If they're supposed to be this covert thing, why do they have a, such a like huge bunch of soldiers following them? If they're supposed to be, you know, basically if everything goes wrong, there's they cannot be connected back to the government. Yeah. And they are forever being followed by, you know, okay, it's it's Rick Flagg was like, true. you know, you know, in plain clothes or whatever it is mm-hmm. and he pretends to be something. Yeah. That's fine because Rick Flagg is there to take care of all of them. Yeah. But, like, they have a Navy SEAL team which Scott Eastwood is there and Clint Eastwood's son. Okay, <laughs> he's just there in it. And they're just following them. So, what is the purpose of this? If the Navy SEALs can do all, all these things, why are these guys? Why is Harley Quinn in this team? Like, she could have easily been placed in another part of the plot. Like, this whole, you know, thing of the Joker trying to rescue her was quite sweet. Okay, I thought that was a cool idea. That the, But the Joker should have been the main villain of this movie. And the Joker should have not been relegated to just being like this guy who's just like, I need to get my girlfriend back. Which was funny in the end when he does come back and saves her from the prison. I thought that was quite funny where he takes off his mask and he's like, baby, I'm back, you know, for you. I thought that was still funny and good. But it's just like, you have these great characters. You had, you could have used Batman better in this film. Like he's there in three scenes. All of them are cool. Okay, let's put it this way. They have good characters. They all have good characters. These movies all have good characters. Henry Cavill, we're, we're dealing with it. Okay, Batman is great. Ben Affleck, when I see Ben Affleck in the bat suit, I don't think about Ben Affleck. I just think about Batman. This guy is the Batman. He's great. And they have Harley who's perfect. They have the Joker who can be molded into a good Joker. I think, you know, between Ben Affleck and Jared Leto, they will face off really, really nicely on camera. And I think it's going to be good. But when they have all these great characters and they have such a loose, ridiculous plot which doesn't, you know, use what it has, it's such a waste, man. So let's not even blame the structural problems of this movie. This script is just like, it's it's weird and it's just random. Yeah. And it's just such a shame. Because there's some good parts in this movie. I'm right? very concerned yeah. about moving forward, especially now that we know the Joker's going to be back with Harley and Deadshot is still... At large, essentially. No, he's in gone some back way. to prison. He's back in prison, but he's... <clears throat> I, I would be stunned if that's the last we've seen of him. Yeah, yeah, no, he's going to so, be an anti-hero. Exactly. So, speak, yeah. so um, putting aside... So, let's forget... So, we've talked about structural issues, like you said. We've talked about script and whatnot. So, mm-hmm. now, if we just simply look at the... the future? I, the, yeah, look at I me. Mean, look at the future, and you look at the identity of this movie, and look at the identity of BVS and the other movies to come, yeah. right? Obviously, we haven't seen Wonder Woman, we haven't seen Flash, we haven't seen Aquaman, but... We're using the Justice League trailer and the Wonder Woman trailer as sort of, we have so as far? our aesthetic, yeah. essentially, of yeah. what we can expect, right? So, what I'm really worried about <laughs> is when we saw the Joker face off against the Batman in this, in this movie, yeah. I was immediately removed from the world because this movie, as the marketing suggested, was going to be... The one thing that it was accurate with it selling us was the vibe and the and the color at least in the first half, like we sure. mentioned, right? And that's when this interaction happened. With The interaction with the Joker and Batman was pretty early. Yeah. And the minute, like you said, when Batman walks in, you don't think about Ben Affleck. He's a good, he's a good Batman. Batman. Yeah. It's, like he's, you know, it's dark as Batman, Batman. should be, yeah, and it's yeah. great. And this Batman is equally as dark, I say, as the Nolan Batman. It's, yeah. it's very, very grim, yeah. and that's fine. That's good. It's perfect for the part, as mm-hmm. you said, right? It's true to the part. Now, the Joker can be your fun, colorful. Harley Quinn can be fun and colorful. Again, I think, yeah, that's appropriate to the part. However, the way that they've made this movie so strong with its identity and the way that BVS was so strong with its identity, for the reason you know, people critique that, but let's give credit to the fact that he was bold enough yeah, to be deliberate with his choice, yeah. right? Now, moving forward, I can't see... These worlds interact? These worlds meet. Now, here's, here's the mm. thing. Now, this is where Guardians, again, to compare the two because they are both that sort of like left of center kind of thing, I could so easily at all times see the Guardians guys come to Earth or see the guys from Earth go to Nova Prime mm-hmm. and, you know, hang out over there. Even though it's a completely different world, it fits. Yeah, totally. It it's fits right. without any issues whatsoever. These guys, however, 
again, respect for being bold and, you know, sticking to your guns. But it's so bizarre it how bizarre. different the tone is. And so when the Batman faced the Joker, I was just like, guys, I don't know which... Is the Batman going to say a funny line? Because that's going to be weird as hell. And he didn't. Yeah. So they were true to their parts. But then it, that's what made it... There was friction there. Yeah, there was this yeah, sort of yeah, like... I agree. Batman running around on a purple Lamborghini. Mm. Like, this This doesn't look right. It's cartoony. <laughs> the last time I saw Batman, he was grimmer than I've ever seen him. And now he's in this cartoon world. Like, what the hell? Like, this yeah. is... It, I think you that know? this is, uh, but this is what it's going to be. I mean, like, I, I, like I'm still gonna allow this. I'm gonna give them one more pass in the sense that, <laughs> you know, they got BVS wrong, and this was too late to fix. And they tried and they failed. Okay, it yeah. was a surgical operation. This film, um, and that's why it's so muddled and so weird. Uh, but I think, and you know. I think going forward, I think I told you all the movies which are out of the system, you know, mm-hmm. which have not even, who, which are in pre-production before, well, after BVS came out, I think will show a definitive like kind of change. I know Wonder Woman is going to look different. I know Justice League already looks different. I mean, mm-hmm. it already feels different um, in terms of the but trailer. See, but they're like. definitely Wonder Woman, Justice League, Man of Steel, and BVS definitely fall in the same tree. The branches on the same tree. Suicide Squad was a completely different farm and a different yeah, continent. Yeah, you know what I, I mean. Agree, like, I agree. I agree. It does there's nothing it, about it that was the same. Yeah, and, and so you, it, know, you know, even this is this this uh, the other problems of this movie. I mean, like even as just just the plot wise, I just want to get in get back into it. I mean, there's no real, there's nothing really happening because they go and they fight these zombies, kind of zombie soldiers and stuff like that, which is just like what I compare to, you know, what Avengers does very successfully, but, yeah, you know, which I get annoyed Chitauri, with. The, the Chitauri, Chitauri yeah. or, you know, Ultron's, you know, guys. Yeah. You need fodder. You need yeah, something yeah, yeah. to kill. You know, you need lots of it. You need henchmen. I, I don't know what they were called. I don't know if they ever said anything, but <clears throat> yeah. the minute that... Um, the Enchantress like kissed that guy and yeah. he got transformed and then he had like warts on his face. I was yeah. like, wow, you basically just gave him an STD. Because <laughs> that's exactly what it looked like. She kissed the guy oh and then he God. just like breaks out into like boils. It's bizarre, like, yeah. Well... No, those are not boils. Those are eyes. I thought they were all It was eyes. all over his face. Yeah, with, all over his body. All it over was his everything. Weird. And just like herpes. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. And it was just... Yeah. <laughs> it was bad. It's... Oh man, it's bad. Yeah, yeah. And, and 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 Enchantress also just a weird villain to to have so yeah. early in the game. And you're right; it was very Ghostbustersy. You yeah. know the ending. And yeah, exactly. And, and, that, that entire yeah, scenario. Other, other question, though. So in a train is, station, this is going you know. up into the air, and yeah. she's like, I don't know what her plan is. She says she wants. You know, they 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 have. You know, we were gods. In her exposition, yeah, yeah. And now uh, we want to rule them again. So we'll build a machine. We'll build a machine. I don't know what that meant. So, yeah. But basically, she sends a bolt of lightning into the air and starts destroying stuff around the world. Some portal stuff. Okay, yeah. which is not first of all not good enough anymore as yeah, a villain. Exactly. The stakes it's, are not high enough. Yeah. And second of all, where's Batman? I mean, where's right? Justice League? Yeah. I mean, okay, fi- but, fair I enough. Mean, it's that, not that is, yeah. Fair enough. But are you telling me that the Batman would not make... The Batman has gone to China, dude, in like the Dark Knight. Like, he can't go to Midway City. Literally, the name of the city is yeah. Midway City. Yeah. Okay, and he can't like show up if he knows that this stuff is going down. Right. Especially when the Joker and Harley Quinn and all these people who are his rogues gallery are involved. Yeah. Where is Batman? Where is yeah. he just taking off? And and that's the thing. That's why at the end, that last, that there's a mid credit scene where Amanda Waller and, and him are talking and he's basically saying that, you know, I don't approve of your methods mm-hmm. but then I mean first of all I told you that discrepancy of his company funding this whole yeah. chip in people's yeah. heads yeah. and the second thing is that you think Bruce Wayne is about to go and have a political like bout and say hey, I don't agree with you the Batman will go and stop it like it's yeah. it's, it's yeah. as simple as that so I mean uh, fine that's a universe issue they can't yeah. get yeah. Ben Affleck blah, whatever you know all that stuff but see this, this, this weird, is the though. problem that people have always like asked about Marvel movies with you know like after the Avengers movie happened with yeah. the subsequent Iron Man movie and all that They're where like, were these guys where were these guys now the answer to that is that they said it's they write they, it out you know, they write the, it out you know, so that's where this yeah. thing fell into a trap of like if you brought Batman in for one scene why is he yeah why is he came in for like one day and then said eh, no it's cool I'll, 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 I'll sleep I'll sleep in today like what yeah. he can't come in for like five minutes of the movie fix a problem which he did yeah. leave and then never come back when the problem escalates like a hundredfold you know what would have been a really cool post credit sequence oh, yeah. where the Batman shows up but he's this lady he's like ah oh, damn it <laughs> that would have been good and that's like the Indian police also yeah. just showing up after the crime speaking, is over. speaking of the, uh, the, the mid credit scene another question was um, so 
Bruce Wayne at the end of Justice League, <laughs> at the end of uh, BVS, yeah. and as we saw in the Justice League trailer, has the Adobe Illustrator files. <laughs> yeah. He's this got something the, everyone has brought up. He's yes. got the Illustrator files. Why does he need a hard copy printout? He doesn't have a printer in the back. Yeah, that's that's what uh, I mean. That, this is a major problem. That it was like it, it felt like an unnecessary scene to just have a scene. You know, yeah. like it, it just felt like a. Yeah, it just felt like that, and 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 that sucks. But so this being said, so I was I was doing some thinking about so the future of uh, again, like what how, how could they use this to their leverage? Because obviously the big the big competitors Marvel, but then you know Disney has now Star Wars. I mean, yeah, uh, they have Star Wars as well, and Star Wars is doing a franchise thing where they've got prequels and sequels and then origin stories. <clears throat> so it's like, so what could they do now? Because clearly they're trying to play catch up with the whole Avengers team up movie thing. So what if they if this movie doesn't do well, which it seems like it's not doing, if if they wanted to change course, what could they do? So my thinking was, tell me how you, how's this taste going down? They've got the whole Suicide Squad together. Yeah. They've given us some backstory to Deadshot. They've given us some backstory to Harley Quinn. Yeah. M- most of the guys we don't know anything about. Um, and this whole Adobe Illustrator and MS DOS printout thing <laughs> has been attained. Yeah. So do you think there's any scope for them? To eventually pull a Rogue One and be like, hey, this is the story of how Lex Luthor stole the plans and figured out who the Flash was um, and Amanda Waller did the same. And you, know, you the, have your prequel only, story that the way. The only difference is <laughs> nobody gives a shit. <laughs> nobody cares anymore. You think like 20 years maybe? But you know why? Because DC just does this every movie. They spend a considerable amount of time explaining why the previous movie, like defending yeah. themselves. Seriously. Saying like, hey guys, I'm sorry about that last one, but please bear with me. That's pretty much every DC movie. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm so tired of them trying to play cash up with themselves uh, that it's so unnecessary. And like, nobody. Can, I mean, like, we are, we are saying, let it go, literally. Like, just saying, like, you know, okay, Lex Luthor had that information. We let it go. <laughs> just move on. Like, you know what? This is, and you know, just you know, this is why I bring up using the co- source material from the comics. This is why, because these stories are there. Just do it, Zack Snyder. You're good at adapting stuff. Just make. And they have a good story on their hands for a Batman film. How did Jason Todd die? How is Harley involved? How is the Joker involved? Mm -hmm. Do an Arkham story with Batman? Mm -hmm. Please, just keep it that. Make it cool. Make it sick. I don't yeah. care, man. Don't don't do something bizarre. Don't don't invent. Don't invent stuff, bro. Like it's so bad. That is so bad. And and ah, dude, I don't know what to say. Like I really okay. Coming back. Last things. Sure. I like Captain Boomerang. This is the first movie I want to say that Jack Courtney has done wow. a decent job. Okay. Yeah, because you know he's he's just random. You're, you're alone. You're alone on that one. But all right. Cool. No, I mean because like, because he was funny and cool. I, every other I will, movie. I, I will welcome any <clears throat> any positives you can throw at me. Like, any other movie I've seen Jay Courtney in, he has yeah. ruined the franchise. Die Hard ruined the franchise. Terminator ruined the franchise. This one was already ruined to begin with, so I yeah. guess he did, couldn't do much more damage. But having said that, he mm. was better than it. Sure, <laughs> so sure. so that was fine. Um, other things, there was a nice cool scene with Deadshot uh, basically taking on an entire wave of these zombies and stuff. Which was cool I liked it Yeah Will Smith can do action scenes We knew this <laughs> Yeah Here's the other thing so This is what my flatmate yeah. says And uh-huh. you know this. I think it comes down to this He's like You know what You should boil a movie down Sometimes to fist pump moments and He's like There are no fist pump moments In like You know These movies where you, When you see Ant-Man become giant man mm. You know you're just like, yes. holy shit, that yes. is a fist bump right. moment. Yeah. And all yeah. these, you know, these cool moments that yeah. happen in films, yeah. which are not revealed by movie marketing. Right. When you see them, you're just like, whoa. See? And that's the thing, Edge that movie, the stuff. marketing for that movie was wait until you see this fight yes, scene. exactly. Wait, and we were all like, this better be good. And it was. Yeah. Beautiful. It was amazing, right? right? And, and and all those moments you which, never see that in with DC. Like none of know. their marketing ever. Like like when when DC was advertising BVS, it was like the face off. Yeah, Superman rips the Batmobile roof <laughs> off. Like oh oh, they're standing up, they're standing up, guys. Yeah. And then in the movie, he leaves. Even in the <laughs> like, shot, what? in the shot <laughs> where the pro, like the Justice League as in like uh, Wonder Woman, uh, Batman, Superman are formed together to fight Doomsday. Yeah. That was revealed. Like that yeah. would be an immediate cheer in the cinema if you hadn't shown me that right. or didn't reveal Wonder Woman at all. Yeah. Like you know what worked in this movie Flash's cameo for because, like a second yeah because exactly. I didn't know it was there yeah, yeah. The but it was completely thing, useless it was useless and, and apparently that was directed by Zack Snyder yeah exactly because they had started <laughs> filming The Flash right yeah, oh, but, filming uh, Justice League Justice and they're like hey just do a shot of him standing in a doorway but you know what right, it, cool. still, it still was like whoa was, yeah. that's cool Like yeah. I, I was like yeah. yeah and that's it fist bump moments man just divide just find out the moments like that, that dead shot scene where he erases everybody 
that was a great moment and they need to secure those you know they need yeah. to work on those moments which would make a movie feel like you're watching a comic book movie and not some self righteous yeah. super dark grim thing which is trying to be more serious than it should be yeah that's it cool okay our producer is shutting up so we need to go to random news but i do want to in one quick thing about the joker cuz yeah. i think it needs to be said yeah. i think he is a good joker this was a horribly written story for him yeah, he did not I have agree. an opportunity to do the joker sure, right justice he was a mafioso for the most part justice being the operative word i thought he was basically just a guy doing good things in that he was trying to look out for his girlfriend but he was not an agent of chaos in the slightest and he did not scare me in the little bit. He's a psychopath. And so Jared Leto, good job. Uh I think Jared Leto will be good. Yes. Bad job writing this part. Yeah. Let's move on. Cool. All right. Anyway. So that's our show. Thanks Jishnu and uh thank you guys for listening. We'll see you guys next week with more stuff, I guess. What what's what's coming out? What you need you... to watch Stranger Things. Okay, yeah, Stranger Things. Yeah, yeah. I'm you need to get on that. that. And you guys should too. Yeah. Cool. All right. Bye. See you guys next week. Yeah, no. Hey, thanks for listening to the show. If you have some time, you should also check out The Scene and the Unseen, which is a podcast hosted by writer Amit Verma, who takes a close look at the scene and the unseen aspects of various government policies. Only on IBM. Excuse me, bhaiya. Excuse me. Bole, madam. Menu mein kya hai? Menu mein scene unseen hai, podcast hai, on-course hai, Cyrus hai, Mare in India, Rediscovery Project, Empowering Series, Sex Vex hai, IBM Likes hai, Simplified hai, Keeping It Queer hai, Things and Destinations hai, My Neighbor Zuckerberg hai, or The Fan Garage hai. Aapko kya chahiye hai? Ek baar repeat kar denge kya? Repeat, repeat nahi karta hum. Aap jao, ivmpodcast.com pe or suno ye sab. Ya fir download karo unka app. Sab aapke ungliyo pe.